Hello, I'm Leila McKinnon. Welcome to this special edition of A Current Affair. We are live tonight from the staging area at Nowra uh, in southern New South Wales, where many of the crews who've been working incredibly hard in the last couple of days and risking their lives will shortly be clocking off and hopefully getting some well-earned rest before the next fires to come. In the past 24 hours, seven people have been killed in New South Wales. We are starting to see see the full horrifying aftermath of the fires that ripped through here in the last couple of days. Hundreds of homes have been lost in New South Wales. In Victoria in the past 24 hour, hours, one person has been confirmed killed and many thousands are still stranded on beaches. Mimi Becker is in Malakuta for us tonight and we're going to cross to Mimi now. Uh, Mimi, some of the pictures out of Malakuta have just been absolutely appalling and have shocked people across Australia and even gone around the world. How are people there holding up? Good evening, Layla. Well, as you say, it is appalling and it is shocking. And absolutely every person that I've spoken to today, a resident or a tourist, the one word they use to describe what's happened here in Malakuta is devastating. And, and for here, I've got just, Justin Brady joining me tonight. He's a resident, a local resident here. And unfortunately, this story is devastating for him as well. We're in st standing in front of what was Justin's home. Justin, how are you coping? Um... Well, it's been tough, um, but I've had a lot of great support in Mallacoota because Mallacoota is that sort of place. And, yeah, it is devastating because it's taken me a while to get the place. And I only recently, like three months ago, decided to commit to living here full time. But you built this property. Well, with the help of some local father and son building team who did an amazing job and they built a beautiful building. And it's a small building, but it's gone, as you can see. It's... Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it is devastating, but we were lucky we got out on time. Um, it's pretty bizarre that my neighbours, their place is fine on that side, and my neighbour on this side, you know, they're, they're fine and they're safe, everyone's alive. Um, and we got down to the jetty and we just watched it from there. So. so you were with the thousands of people on the jetty watching? Um, watching well, the not quite. We were through. just we were at a different jetty where it was just like close. Closer. And there was about maybe 50 people congregated in this little spot, and we just got in boats. And um, I just bumped into some tourists who drove into town, not knowing what was going on. And I got them in the canoe, and then we transferred from the canoe to a local guy who runs the um, Bucklands Jetty mm -hmm. High sort of donated one of you said just get in the boat because it's got a cover on it you'll be protected by the embers and this young couple who are gauged to get married yeah. just arrived in australia and they walked into this walked into this so, and this is what's left for yeah. dozens and dozens of residents here at Malakuta, Layla. There are also thousands of tourists stranded. This truly is a very isolated town right now. There's no way in, no way out, except for by chopper or boat. And that's exactly how we made our way here to be able to tell this story tonight. To give you an idea of just how isolated the residents and tourists here at Malakuta are, we've spent four hours by boat to arrive here at the township. Right along the coastline, it was completely charred and smoke is still billowing in the hills. These residents, they have no way to get in or out. Malakuta is cut off and under siege. Residents have slept in their cars for the past few nights. There's no electricity and dozens of homes are gone. Laid awake most of the night, but horrendous, pitch black, bright sort of red skies. Totally different experience, never experienced it before. The true scale of the destruction is best shown from this aerial footage. It just it doesn't discriminate at all. Many homes have been destroyed, streets unrecognisable. Residents could only watch on in horror as the ferocious fire tore through the town. Yeah, the Armageddon was sort of starting to hit. We could just see all the fires all around us and it was just, it was terrifying. It was, I hope I never ever have to go through that again. 
pretty nerve-wracking, pretty nerve-wracking. Um, definitely when, like, the kind of, it just started glowing red and then when it just went pitch black and just every, the sirens and all that, it was just, yeah, pretty scary. The smell was horrendous. Yeah. Yeah, hard to breathe. Then it was the big gas bottles that people have for their homes just were exploding and there was whistling and that was like kaboom and you could just hear it. Earlier today, Mum Anna Pleats told Nine of the terrifying moments she had to take shelter in her boat with her two young children. It was me and the kids and we had this blanket wet and then we had a cotton one hanging down the other side and we just scratched there. And it was just about being calm and being OK, because the smoke was pretty thick and there was a lot of ash coming down. As the fire front rolled in, the ash rained down thick and fast. Yeah, it was just, it was fast and it was just high and thick and I mean I've just never been exposed to that before. While their holiday home wasn't lost in the blaze, they're unable to return. Worried about the smoking remains and embers. My second home and it's my sort of sacred place to come and rest and so but it will it will be beautiful again because it just is it's a beautiful beautiful people beautiful place earlier today a defense force barge was loaded in melbourne with two weeks supply of food water and 30,000 liters of fuel bound for malakuta and now you guys are all stuck like thousands well, of others we are but we're going to take our holiday back just the way it was Mm. Yeah, and help out where we, we can, can with the locals. Everywhere we can. Yeah. The girls, our, our wives have been down at the local supermarket stacking shelves today. So, um, Last night was our second night here. Um, the first night I didn't sleep very well, so I was on a deck chair um, both times. But help is on the way. The Australian Navy has sent HMAS Chules to Mallacoota to evacuate these residents and holiday makers. Because there's no one, there's nothing in or out, and there's no one here to help, so do what you can. Mimi, the people who are trapped there must feel like it, they've been there forever. When are they going to be able to get away? Look, Layla, at this stage, people still don't know when they will be able to leave. Everyone is uh, anticipating that arrival of the Defence, the Navy ship, here tomorrow. Hopefully that will be here before midday, we're told, with those supplies. But... After that, it's not known when the residents will be able to leave. Sorry, the tourists will be able to leave. But for many of them, as you heard, they're here, they're sticking around, they're happy to support the town of Mallacoota that they love. And for many of them, they come here year after year and that's what they're hoping to do to help this community get back on their feet. OK, thank you very much, Mimi. Mimi Becker there in Mallacoota.